right, hi you guys. So we're back onto the interior of the Corvette. Um, basically what I realized was when I did my initial video about tearing apart the dash, I never really did explain the process too much. So that is what I'm going to do now. Um, I, I basically just want to show you how to pull it apart. I need to pull it apart to get to my speedometer. I'm going to rebuild that speedometer myself. I will show you that process as well. Um, also, um, any, any other behind the scenes dash related stuff. So in order to get the dash out, we need to take out a few screws. So there are two screws on the side, this one and this one here. So we're gonna remove those. Then there are three on the top. Uh, let's see if I can't get a good shot of that. There's one here, one there, and another one right here. So we'll remove those three. That's five total. Then there are two right here that we need to remove um, on the side of the center cluster. So we're gonna pull these two out as well. And then underneath here, uh, there are some more screws. Uh, the first one, being this one, which is currently not in there. And then the two holding that panel in, sorry. This is hard to do all at the same time. <laughs> Point and hold this damn phone. Uh, so, so then we have uh, three more screws on this little panel. Then before we can take this out, um, we need to actually drop the, um, the column here, the steering column. So I am going to start doing some of that. And Okay, so as far as the steering column goes, it's pretty straightforward. There are just two bolts that hold it on. Um, this one here, and the other one on the other side. So once you have them loosened up, you can just unscrew them. This one actually has a nut on the back side, so I may not be able to undo that with one hand, so I might need to cut away here for a second. But um, basically, yeah, shoot, I'm gonna have to, maybe I can use the weight of it to hold that nut. Yeah, that's working, cool. I'm just letting the steering column pull on the bolt a little bit, and that way it's keeping the nut from spinning. So we have these two bolts, so I'm just gonna put them there. I have door parts here. I'm also working on the door, so I will be posting video of that at some point. Um, but once you, once you take those two bolts loose, then the steering column will kind of drop. It's also a good idea to loosen up the flange in the... There's a, there's a flange inside this that connects to the firewall, and you should loosen those bolts up too. Those are probably not going to be anything we can see right now because there's just no way to see them. Um, but if I can get some footage of that, I will do that. But this is probably as far down as that needs to go, really. So one thing I do want to say and show you about these screws here is on this one, you're going to probably want to use uh, a short screwdriver like this to just get that started. Because there's really not enough space to, to work. And again, I'm doing this with one hand, so it's not easy. But uh, anyway. All right, so once, uh, now I've got all the screws loose on this piece here. I've got the two bolts removed here, so the steering column's dropped. Um, there's three screws underneath this, one here and one each side of that. Actually, you only really need to undo this one. And that will drop out. Um, 
Actually, it won't drop out if bol the bolts are still attached down there, but mine are not. So I did actually want to just remove this. So all I've done is I've removed the bolts and screws that I've told you about, as well as this one and this one, and loosened those so that the dash will move a little bit. I'm sure that's not easy to see because my lighting is shit today, but... Um, damn. Yeah, the lighting in here is not really good for this, but hopefully you can see how that is coming apart there. So what this does is it gives you some access now to inside here. Uh, as you can see, you can see the back of the speedometer and the tachometer and all the wiring and everything. And um, basically what I'm going to do is start disconnecting stuff from the back side of this panel. Um, and in order to do that, there's a lot of stuff that needs to get disconnected. Um, for example, this plug on this switch right here, you need to, oops, you need to disconnect that. Um, I have a new switch coming that is not charred. <laughs> there are also um, some vacuum hoses on this that you need to disconnect as well. Um, so you got to pull these up off of there. Don't forget which one goes to which. Uh, location that's important and um, and then let's see I will I will work this until I get to the next step to show you okay and I forgot there's one more little bolt uh, this little guy actually screws up through here to go through this um, this vent tube that helps hold that on to that so you need to find that and remove that too. Um, that's my courtesy light, so you should probably unplug that. This is a speaker wire somebody had installed. I need to just reroute that the right way or get rid of it because I'm not using a stereo in this car. Um, but anyway, so, so that is something I wanted to point out. So just make sure that you get anything that holds, uh, attaches to this from underneath loosened up. So at that point, basically, what you need to do then is reach down back here, find a way to the back side of this speedometer, and disconnect the cable back there. And you're going to want to disconnect the lighting, uh, all the lights and everything too. Um, so I have these hoses disconnected, and I know that the blue one goes to the front, so I'm just going to keep that in mind. That actually goes down to this switch. What this is, is if you pull this out or push it in, whichever way it, it goes, um, that keeps your headlights open when you turn the. Uh, actually, never mind. I don't even know what I'm saying. So, all right. All right so, now, next, what you want to look at before, as you're trying to pull this piece out, what you want to keep an eye on is these little guys here. They will hang on, oops, they will hang on the column down there. So as you're, as you're pulling on it this way and trying to pull it towards you, you need to carefully stretch these out a little bit so that they will clear the column. Also, just be aware that there's a clip right here that is a wire clip that holds onto this harness inside there. So. I'm glad I'm doing this because I needed to check my hoses to make sure they were all not getting crushed. And this one I discovered right here, of these two, this one is really smashed flat. So I'm going to have to reroute those and figure out how to do that without crushing them. So um, anyway, at this point, this this piece is basically loose and you can you can wiggle it free, but you have to be really careful about what's hooked onto it back here. And really, it's best to probably go ahead and disconnect any other lights. Like we have some gray, like this gray light right here. You can just very carefully twist that this way, not this way. Oops, not this way, <laughs> but twist it this way carefully and they should pop out. Sometimes the metal will come out of the plastic and you can just use a screwdriver later and very carefully pop that out. Um, of course, that doesn't do no good if the wire is still connected, but um, anyway, the gray ones are just illumination, 
and the other ones, like this green one, is for uh, something else, and there's uh, signal lights under here and stuff too, but you just have to kind of keep that in mind as you're going. And uh, just basic idea here is to loosen things up as you go, and then you've got to wiggle this out of here. So as you can see, it's it's pretty pretty crazy looking right now. Um, but the, the idea is to just gently wiggle it loose and then work it past the steering wheel. That's if you don't want to take everything apart, you know. I'm doing this in such a way that I don't have to dis dismantle the entire dash. However, that actually may be an easier route to go. So it's it, you've got to have some patience, drink some coffee or, or something, and put on some good jams while you're doing this. Because <laughs> it is not a fun job. It's very tedious. Uh, it takes a while, and you just need to be very, very careful. Because this stuff, after 44 years, this stuff is very fragile. You know, so um, I might not even need to take it completely apart. Well, yeah, I was going to say I might only need to just get it far enough that I can get the speedometer out but I think it's best to just pull the whole panel out really so I do want to point out one other helpful thing if you, if you rotate this this way you can almost get to the you can easily get to the back side of the tachometer to uh, remove the lights and the plug on the tack and that's also an easy way to get this back in there and I suggest that you take a picture of the back side of this these gauges and uh, because they do have labeling on them for what color wires go where or what color wired lights go where so that's really important that they go in the right spot so you can use your hands and feel around um, those hole or the holes I'll show you um, in a minute what I'm talking about holes wise um, and then so that's rocking it this way, and then if you rock it over this direction, like that, uh, you can get to this side, and you can actually see the back side of these much easier even from this angle. So I just have a couple more wires to disconnect there. All right, now as you can see the dash, and I use my legs a lot, so <laughs> just so you know, really helps use your legs. Um, if you can, the, the, really the best way to do this, for, in my opinion, is to is to turn it that way and work it out that direction. Because you have a little bit more space due to the gap over here on the side of the door than you do on this side with this stuff, right? So um, that's how I'm doing this. And as you can see, this is one of those vintage air... Uh, tubes it's kind of crushed I need to figure out the right way to to route those but as you can see here I've got it to this point where you just kind of watch those levers down there and then work it out that way and I have I just realized I have this uh, ground wire right there that needs to come off that ground wire don't forget these ground wires when you put this back together um, and now now I can just basically lift that right on out of there so that is effectively how you remove the driver's side dash and of course now it looks like a cluster F back here because all this stuff's just hanging and looks horrible I really need to properly hang this back up here. Um, I think uh, there was some kind of a loom hook or something up there. Is that it? No, that's not it. But anyway, yeah, all of my vintage air tubing and stuff got pretty well squashed. Like, this is so squashed, I don't know if it even really works right. So, it's good to have this all open again so that I can work on that. All right, and just one last note. Um, before I go walk away from this, I like to put one of these bolts back in to hold the steering column up so that there's not undue pressure pushing it down. Really important. 
Also, while you're doing this, I highly recommend that you buy a batch of the right bulbs um, and put some bulbs in. I bought bulbs at Eckler's and now I don't remember exactly which ones these are. I think these are the 1895s if I'm not mistaken. Mm, this might be the smaller ones. Those are also 1895. Yeah, okay, that's what they were. So these are 1895s. I, I should just double check that, but I highly recommend that you buy all brand new bulbs and replace every single bulb, even if it doesn't look like it's bad, because ideally you don't want to have to tear this apart again just to do that, right? I mean, who wants to do all that work just to change a bulb? So go ahead and replace all your bulbs. There's quite a few. I think I bought like 30 of them just to have more than enough. Now, this wire right here is the tachometer connection. So if you have the digital digi digital <laughs> or electronic or electrical tack, that's what that is. Um, I don't know what that really is for off the top of my head. Um, and then as you can see on the harness here, everything is pretty much nicely um, organized. So this side is speedometer wires uh, or lighting and, and whatnot. And then this side is tachometer lights. Each side has a ground. Uh, there's a ground on each side of these. You've got to make sure that is well connected. Um, and that connects to this little guy right here on the speedo or on the tack. And then there's one on this side for the speedometer. So those are really important. Um, check this plug here. These often will burn. So just double check it and make sure that it's not roasted beyond use. I'll be replacing my light switch, so that will eliminate any more potential for fire there. Um, and next we will be looking at the speedometer. So when it comes to removing the speedometer itself, there's a few screws that you need to remove. Uh, this one right here, um, well, actually, it's these guys. This one... No. It's this one. And this one, you need to loosen the tack side of that. Um, and then this one. And these two right here. Because this plate needs to come off with this. You could just disconnect that there. Um, but with this, the, with this, the way it's tight, you, you don't really want to disconnect that there. You can just leave it attached. And that one. So I'll loosen and remove those and then we'll come back. So there's five screws there. Uh, these five. One, two, three, four, and five. Uh, this one is just loose and then this bracket comes out. And that's just to give this some stability since it's kind of thin right in here. And then after you do that, this whole speedometer will just gently lift right on out of there like that and now I'm gonna take that sucker apart unfortunately one of the tabs is broken and that's not surprising um, that happens with old plastic I'm going to very carefully disassemble this here on my bench and we'll be back to show you more about that process in a minute. Once you take this screw, this screw in the bottom, what you have to do through this, or you can take this whole plate off with those two screws and then take out that screw. Um, and this screw, once you do that, then this whole back piece will come off. And that's your speedometer. Um, if you look down this at, a, at the angle, you can see that the nub of the speedo needle sticks out, so you do not want to lay this straight down. Make sure you do not do that, or you can damage the speedometer itself. So I'm going to put that over there. All right, and then next what you want to do is remove those two, well, remove the this cable, then remove that screw and this screw, 
and that will allow you to um, take these two pieces apart and I'm going to very carefully try to do this with one hand and that allows you to remove the actual speedometer mechanism so that's the speedo mech as you can see there's some rust right there which I think is indicative of a problem so next stop is to analyze this mechanism and figure out why it's malfunctioning so I'm just gonna set that there and take a look at this this is dirty um, this will come up out of there and these pieces of foam being 44 years old are very very nasty let's see there we go um, I might just leave them as they are because they look complete uh, but I definitely do not want to ruin any of this stuff so I'm very carefully just going to set that aside into my messy pile here and now I'm going to take a look at the speedometer mechanism. So the next thing you need to do is very very carefully unscrew these. These are going to probably be rusty and they are very tiny so you need to be incredibly careful. As you can see they're just dripping rust all over the, the gauge dial. But once you remove those, oh yeah you have to remove the needle very very carefully I mean that is one of those things that if you screw that little pin up this whole thing is useless um, because getting that off of there that needle right there getting that out without breaking this is not easy um, you gotta be very very careful and the same is true with these screws these little guys here um, don't use lubrication to try to to loosen those up. You'll ruin this face. I'm, I'm telling you now, you don't want to get oil on this. And you do not want to touch this either. If you touch that print on there, you will ruin it. So it is incredibly important that you never touch the face of this thing. You don't want to get finger oils on it or any other oils on these. Um, I believe that a lot of the paint they used was actually water soluble so you can re really literally just wash the numbers right off of this and if you do that you'll cry I would cry <laughs> um, so anyway yeah just a little blow of air to get that rust off of there and maybe a dry something to just kind of gently wipe the rust around those holes but you just really don't want to mess with that just just put it aside leave it there or better yet send your speedometer to me and I'll repair it for you um, if you want I'm seriously considering doing this as a side job um, so now I have this mechanism apart um, as you can see uh, there's not really a lot to it it's really interesting how these things work you can find some neat videos on speedometers and how they work um, I would recommend checking those out. They're very interesting. All right, next you want to remove these two screws that hold this plate down. So this was on top here. If you back up, you'll see that. And then you want to remove these two spring clips right there. I like to keep things positioned in a way that makes sense to me. I have this like this and then these screws there. Be very careful if you remove any of this stuff because you can easily twist off the head of a screw and um, really screw stuff up. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> All right, so next what those shims or those clips were on this side of these guys. And what now I can do is I can pull these out this way. So those will come out like that and I'm going to just very gently set them down there um, and then that one come out the bottom side very carefully and put that over here all right so now I'm down to the inner workings of this rascal so sometimes some of these things like this little guy will break um, that you'll find, I think you can purchase these 
Um, I can replace that at some point, probably. Or if yours needs one, that can be replaced. This pin is really, really delicate. Uh, this is this is where the needle connects right here, um, and then as you can see, there's a little spring. Let me get a screwdriver. I guess this will work. Um, there's a little spring right there behind this, and then inside this thing here, there's a magnet, and this whole mechanism is based on magnetism, believe it or not. So when the cable spins on this side, it spins. Um, the unit on the inside around and that causes that magnet to spin. So um, I'm going to remove this screw and this other screw here and pull that whole middle section out next. Alright, so one thing to note is I needed to take the odometer reset mechanism off which is, it is actually screwed through this hole right here and it screws and mounts on the inside right there. I needed to take that out before I could get that center segment out of there. Now what I have is basically I'm down to this section which is effectively a magnet. So that piece right there is this thing is, is magnetized and it turns it turns with this. It doesn't seem to be connected. And I noticed too that there's a there's also a plastic or a, not plastic but there's a gear a gear right in there. I don't know if you can see it very well. It's black down inside there. It goes from this point through and across to right there. So I'm going to have to inspect that and figure out what is that and is it is it in need of some repair? Nothing in here seems broken. Also, a very important note is if you do take this apart, which honestly, I don't recommend just anybody does this because this is really, I mean, I have a certain level of, you know, anxiety pulling them, <laughs> pulling one of these apart. Um, so it's it's not easy. It's not something I would recommend that anybody does um, unless you've got experience doing mechanical repair and stuff like this on a small scale maybe. Um, but when you go to take this apart, the spring is attached to this body and to that pin which is in this little piece inside there. And it's really important that you don't lift this over the pin because you'll tear that spring and stretch it out and stuff. So you can be very careful with that. So I'm going to look at this and analyze it and see what I can figure out, if I can determine why it's acting weird. Um, it's very noisy. My, my speedometer was extremely noisy. Uh, it sounded like it was going to explode. The needle was just flying all over the place. And um, yeah, now I'm going to look at why. Okay, so it seems the main problem, oops, uh, I got to be careful is there's a shit ton of rust up in there, as you can see, and it's all over this piece too. So I'm in the process of cleaning that off. Okay, so I have done some thorough cleaning inside, did a little bit of lubrication, with some arrow, uh, looper plate arrow lithium grease, just a very small amount inside here, and a little bit of this three in one uh, heavy duty oil. This is a lot thicker than the regular three in one, so I put a little of that in that main shaft back there. And what I have set up here is this drill um, to a piece of speedometer cable, and my soldering iron is just holding this down so it doesn't move. So let's check it out and see what happens. And that's about as fast as the drill will go. But that looks pretty good. It's holding in there pretty well. There's a little bit of bounce to it. I'm not sure if that is proper or not. 
but if we just drop the speed, it nicely just drops down. We we'll give it just a little bit. To be honest with you guys, I'm not quite sure how many RPM the cable is supposed to spin. Um, I believe it's set correctly. The only question that I have at this point is whether or not um, I need to put an extra turn in the spring on this. But I'm afraid that if I do that, it's going to fly back way too quick. Because if we bring it up to speed and then drop it, it drops like it should normally. And there is some wonkiness like right there. So let me look at that a little bit closer. But it also may be because this isn't tight. And, you know, there's some wonky sort of setup here. Um, let's see if I can take that off. Without... So I don't want to break my needle. Those are not cheap. Um, so let's see. Cool. All right. So down here in this section here between the, um, the you can see that ring in the middle that kind of clip ring underneath that is where I put a little bit of that thick three in one oil. I didn't bother to remove all the gunk off the outside of this, but I have thoroughly cleaned the inside. Um, this is interesting how this a uh, little gear here works when you want to reset your odometer you push this in it goes further and pushes the tip of that gear post pushes on that uh, cone shaped ring there and that shoves the ring over and engages those two gears so that you can reset the odometer or trip meter um, I haven't done really much other cleaning to this except for cleaning off the gearing and um, just a general cleaning to try to get rid of any gunk off of it. So now I'm going to reassemble everything. Okay, so now she's all back together and I've cleaned off the rust off of those two little screws and this is all clean back here. Some small lubrication. If you do this yourself, don't over lubricate this. And, and really there's a lot of spots where you don't need to lubricate it at all. And you shouldn't. Um, just look to see where the existing lube is and then go with that. So I have set the needle to where she drops just right on zero. I had to tweak the spring and give it a little kink slightly to tighten it up so that that would hit the stop. Um, hopefully that won't affect the speed reading too much. I'm going to reassemble this and reassemble the um, the whole gauge now. And if I can find a way to just sit it, set it in my car without the dash in there, I'm going to go try driving it and see if it's accurate. Okay, so when you're putting the dash, the driver's side dash back in, um, it is really advantageous to both pull the steering wheel down a little bit, lift up on the dash pad some, and I use, actually I use my foot to support this side of the dash as I kind of work it up under here. And once it's, once it's about right there, um, you can very carefully, I mean you have to be really careful because you don't want to scratch this up, which I may have done already, but um, you just gotta, I do the tack side first, all the stuff, because if you, if you turn the, um, the panel sort of clockwise this way, then you can reach the back side. You can even see the back side of the tack pretty well from this side. So connect the tack first and then go through this side. You can pull, you, you can turn it counterclockwise and get a really good angle on the back side of the speedometer. And then I recommend that you put the speedometer cable in first and then do uh, the 
vacuum hoses for the light switch next and then the light switch uh, plug last because that's really kind of the last space to work in there um, and then just zip everything back together with the screws and you should be good to go so once you get most of these screws back in um, then you're gonna want to go ahead and put these two bolts back in right here so there are this one and this one to remount the steering column and then I don't know if you can see them but there's a bolt right there and a bolt right there those are the bolts uh, that I mentioned earlier but those need to be loosened or tightened uh, if you want to loosen up or tighten up the steering column so keep that in mind um, I need to tighten those back up and then I will be able to put this uh, ducting back up in here hopefully without any problems and I use I used this uh, flex fit tape um, flex fix this stuff is great it's a mylar tape it's kind of stretchy and it's really great for like just wrapping around these joints here to keep them from falling uh, pulling apart um, because this small uh, vent tube is I mean this this T fitting that they made is eh, I don't know it's not the best um, it's not bad but it doesn't really allow these tubes to hold on to it very well so um, yeah anyway uh, that's what I'm doing now so we'll get that done and oh as you can see I straightened up the hood release it looks a lot better I haven't cleaned it yet but uh, and this is a little bit tighter I, I should probably just replace that I don't like these vents they point in weird directions Anyway, whatever. It's getting cool now anyway, so I won't have to run AC all the time. Yay!